Okay, so I decided to do a farm update three months back roughly and I wanted to just show you the new seed bank, like what types of vegetables we've been growing and just kind of show you around a bit. We got sunflowers! We got sunflowers growing! So I don't know if anybody has ever seen sunflowers growing right next to bananas. See the bananas there in the background over there? And yeah, so that's really good. I've been pollinating them every day, every morning, because now bees are actually starting to come onto these sunflowers, and uh, that's good, but they're not doing a big enough job on the pollination. I'll just show you as well what I'm doing with, or we, shall I say, because Jane has been a great help as well, uh, what we're doing on actually trying to uh, grow these sunflowers here in Kerala, India. Let's take a quick look. I don't know if you can see it, but, we actually have the beans starting to climb up here nicely and in the back as well. Each one, each sunflower has about three beans and they're starting to climb up uh, no problem whatsoever. Now I planted those about when, they're, when the sunflowers were about, I don't know, maybe two feet high and they're just starting to climb up nicely as well. Okay, so my sunflowers are a little bit confused as well. I just want to mention that because being from Germany and being so strict on the whole time thing, you know, being German, they usually, what they do is they follow the sun with, you know, the, the actual flowers keep changing around depending on where the sun is. Now they're all pointing that way and some are pointing over that way, but the sun is over there. So they're just all confused because they're not from this area. Now, I never mentioned this before, but Often when you're bringing um, plants from a different location um, and they're like, let's say they have a, a summer time of about 17 hours of sunshine and when you bring them to a place where it's always like 10 hours sunshine every single day for the whole year, they get a bit confused because they think it's actually autumn and then they usually tend to run to seed much faster as well. Um, but these guys haven't been doing that that much. so. Touch wood, we'll have a lot of seeds as well to share with farmers and it's just nice to have them in the garden as well. Alright, so we have some ladyfingers down here. Okra is the name of the plant, or ladyfingers. And then we have some more all on that ridge as well. And loads of eggplants on the, on the further on ridges as well. So we should get like a lot and a lot of seeds. Now the reason we're growing on ridges is because we could put a lot of the weeds inside those ridges. And then we just put some coconut fiber uh, on top of that as a mulch. Also put a lot of kind of, um, not on the, the smaller ridges, but on the big ridges we put some of that biochar with um, cow urine. If you want to see that video, I'll put it in there in the description as well. It's like on how to make uh, fertilizer for free or something it's called like that. Um, yeah, so everything is growing really, really well. We have a abundance starting see i don't know if you're in the shot here for this lady finger let me just get it a close-up these are small ones just starting to come along so there they are now when the plant gets bigger they'll make much they're way bigger than that so the plants are still starting to grow um, and these get really really tall as well here we have a problem let me just bring this closer to you as well, to your attention. Can you see that? There's actually uh, caterpillars in there. So what you have here is some caterpillars laying all their eggs in here. Look at this. And there he is. The little fella. So I'm kind of cruel to be kind to my plants. I tend to just put it on the floor and I just step on it and just kill it. Because you have to do that, otherwise they basically just spread everywhere. And that's not what we want to have as well. Huh? I'm filming my friend. This is a, a guy, he's, he's basically... Where's your water buffalo? What buffalo? Darmanda. Daramanda, your name is Daramanda. Okay, nice to meet you. This man here. Oh, nice hat, no? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good hat, no? Coconut leaf, look. Yeah, up. 
<laughs> ah, he's going, man. He's leaving my hat. That's how you lose a hat, you know. Hey, come back here. <laughs> right, so then here we have eggplants. Just check out the leaves on that. These are pretty young still. And basically I give nice big yellow eggplants. Once they get bigger, we'll have a, a great harvest. They're even starting to make flowers already, which is great. Um, yeah, so a lot more plants, a lot more seeds. We're gonna have about 40, 50 of these eggplants are growing now at the moment. So I don't know what the harvest is gonna be like, but it's gonna be probably huge. So that's great. Now one thing I wanted to show you is what I've now started experimenting with is planting some African marigolds with some bananas and some of this Shima Komen which is a nitrogen fixing tree. So basically I can then just chop and drop these guys when, they, when they've given me the seeds I can just chop um, any of these plants even this nitrogen fixing tree and also the bananas when they're growing because they're going to make more and I can chop down the old one and then I can just use it as a mulch around. So I'm actually increasing the, the, the size of the patch by using kind of chop and drop methods and then um, hopefully I get a good harvest as well of the bananas and I get lots of seeds of these African marigolds to give to farmers as well because they attract a lot of butterflies, a lot of bees as well. Um, yeah, that's it. And then maybe I could plant a pumpkin or something um also into these beds once they kind of spread out a bit so i have about 10 of those around the garden those just those kind of spot banana patches yeah. all right behind me if you can see there we have some fava beans and also some gourds this was the i don't know if you saw it in some of the other videos especially the one with the free fertilizer video and I put that fertilizer on there and look how green and strong and lush everything is going. Now fava beans don't climb. So what you have to do is you have to tie them on with a bit of string. So we've done that to the poles, onto the poles. But we also have a lot of gourds. If you see the plastic bags there, that's basically uh, gourds being protected from cucumber fly. I don't like using plastic. Now we have tried with bottles, but they're too short. Um, so if anybody can come up with an idea or maybe somebody already knows how to actually uh, combat the whole cucumber fly then that would be great as well because they just make a hole in there, lay their eggs inside and then the whole fruit rots and you don't get any seeds basically. But let me just take you a bit closer. Let's check out these fava beans, how big they are and how they're going to be so abundant, such an abundant crop. Let me just show you. Just check these guys out. Here we are, look. Look at the size of this fella. I wonder if you can see that on the camera. Just check this guy out here. Look at that. Like, they're gonna fill up with lots and lots of beans. And literally, each plant is making like maybe 20 of these. And there's about 40, 50 plants. So if the locals don't take them, because they have kind of unfortunately been taking some of the plants without asking. Um, and if any Indians are watching this, is there, can you give us some tips on how to combat that? Because I'm new here. I don't want to offend anybody or anything like that. But it is bothering me a little bit because, you know, put up the hard work and then people just take stuff. Now, anyway, we're going to have like a huge bag of these fava seeds to give to the farmers. So I'm so excited about it. It's just... Just check this out, like everywhere there's like flowers, even up high on the plant. Let me just show you, sorry. Like here, there. It's hard to get them all on the shot, but there's lots and lots and lots of flowers everywhere. So here, there, here, up there. So it's just gonna be great, I can't wait. So here we have then a papaya and this is a very nice shape as well. I want to do some kind of, um, well almost breeding with it. I want to try and stabilize it because my feeling is this is actually a cross um, that has just crossed up naturally. And it's just making a way, the shape is way different. And once I get seeds of that, I'll just plant 30 papayas all around here and I'll try and just select for the shape. I'm going to taste it first, of course, just to make sure that it's 
it is actually worth uh, doing that whole little project on that. Some of you remember the potato tower, and telescopic potato tower. Now all five of them got blight, so it didn't work, unfortunately. Um, this one nearly worked. It, it just kept going and kept going and it was up to here and everything was going really, really well. And then it also got blight. So if I had gotten one potato of that, it would have been really great during the dry season. So I'm going to try again in the dry season to find some uh, blight resistant varieties. It's very difficult to get um, these kind of things here in India. So I'll just keep potting away at it and eventually we'll, we'll find something anyway. So and then we can start just growing potatoes during the actual non-monsoon time. Right, managed to get my hat back after a lot of persuasion and his cow actually ran off on him as well in the meantime, so... I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so here we have some amaranth, red amaranth and again it's all just for seed saving as well. And again, the whole mounds, the whole idea of the mounds is just so that we can put weeds inside the middle of them um, because we don't have any compost at the moment. We need to make some compost as well and then mix some biochar into the compost and then we're just going to be laughing. Um, so most of them are looking really really happy. Some are being eaten by some grubs but every day literally I just go and check every single plant. It takes me about 20-30 minutes and you know just be quick about it. Look under some of the leaves. If there's nothing there then everything's okay. But if you find it on one crop, then you better, you know, look a bit more thoroughly. Because once a grub gets, does a, a bite into your plant, it can also transfer viruses and bacteria and things like that. So you don't want that to happen. Okay, one other thing that I love to grow here, and I've grown quite a lot of them, is actually sugar cane. Now, I tend to grow them now together with the bananas as another kind of plant to do the whole chop and drop. As you can see, here's a banana. It's not in the shot, but it's just there next to it and that's one reason so in other places I'm also growing it by itself just to be able to uh, create enough kind of organic uh, matter uh, quickly enough now if these are doing well it means that the soil th these are these need a lot of nutrients so if these are doing well it's a good indicator that your soil is actually not so bad you know um, and a lot of the kind of no dig and letting the weeds grow is really helping the soil from not losing nutrients as well. And um, that's what I'm finding. And the second reason is because I want to, of course, um, you know, if I, if I kind of grind this up, I'll have basically a type of molasses that I can use for compost tea. So grow it myself and I don't have to buy the molasses, which is quite expensive. Um, behind us here we have two maxima varieties of pumpkins uh, the second one is over there it's not in the shot sorry about that but just to show you it's actually growing in india and uh, the guys were telling me from oroville that it's they've been trying for 30 years now i haven't done anything special here it's just growing it's from germany a variety of uh, giant pumpkin and i just pollinated, pollinated it yesterday morning and it's starting to swell up. So with a bit of luck, we might actually end up with a giant pumpkin. I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll update you on that as we go along. Um, okay, let's go on over to the seed bank and take a look at that. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. The house is over there. Uh, the patch we were just in is over there. In here, we're going to do bees. That's the plan. We're going to have it nice and shady for them. And also do different kind of plants that like a lot of shade. Over there, it's actually uh, quite a lot of sun, so we're going to do an experiment over there. And then if we swirl you around, there it is, our new seed bank. Let me just take you inside. Any snakes? Okay, no snakes. Come on. Right, so that's what it looks like now. Let me just take you in. Right, and that's kind of our seed bank at the moment. It's not big, but this is our drying rack, so we just dry all the seeds in here, which is working really well. And we don't have any seeds right now to dry, but that's going to come now in about a month's time once we actually have all those, all those seeds and all those vegetables I showed you, they'll be ready. Now we have here a flax. This is then our seeds. Let me just take you a bit closer so you can just get an idea of what we saved already. Right, so there we are. This is actually all the seeds that we have. We've acquired a number of seeds here. 
all vacuum packed and basically the reason we're doing that is because like these seeds will perish so fast within about six months to a year all of these seeds that we worked really hard to gather in without a fridge they would have just basically perished and then you know now they're actually lasting maybe three years five years and we didn't get a freezer just yet because um, it was more important to just kind of keep the large bulk um, going that we have. Here we have a lot of aqua seeds as well, so they're doing really good now. And I'm so happy that we have a fridge now, because otherwise we would have been like in a, in a pickup. Um, Sativa and actually Swiss company sent us over these seeds as well to try, and some of them actually, the beans, I tried already and they're doing really well here. It's a kind of a field bean that doesn't grow very high. But I also want to take a quick uh, moment to thank, just thank everybody who's actually helped uh, with the fundraising, um, sending donations as well on Patreon. I really, really uh, am very thankful for that as well. So thanks for helping out as well. And that's it. That concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's our farm update. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. And yeah, I might see you in the next one as always. Thanks for watching. Check out that snake. Look at him looking at us. That's what we have to deal with right outside the house. It's pretty hypnotizing. And they're very hard to see in the underbush as well. So that's, we kind of make a lot of noise in the morning and then they go away. But if you step on one of them, it's bloody game over. Sound like David Attenborough there. <laughs> or Bear Gills or whatever, whatever his name is. But look at that little fella. Just hanging out there. And if you see the underbrush over there, if you're walking around there, you want to be hitting with a stick. And otherwise, just, I nearly actually stepped on one before. That's not good. Look at him. Anybody know what kind of snake it is? It looks poisonous. Ah, time to chase him away anyway. Hey, you! What are you doing here? Come on, go off. Huh? Just go a bit closer. Jane, you don't know what that bird is called, do you? No? <laughs> Look at him making the noise. That's another mascot of the garden. We call him... What are we going to call him? He's hanging around all the time. And the two eagles as well. What are we going to call him, Jane? Come on. <laughs> Tell us the name. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> Jimmy or something? <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy, okay. <laughs> or Bert, Bert the bird. Bert the bird, yeah, that's it. I like that. Yeah. Or Red Eye with his big red, red eye. Red Eye Bert. Old Red Eye. Old Red Eye Bert. And up there, that's where the eagles are, huh? Up there in the tree, usually. They're not there today, but. You gotta have mascots, huh? Alright, Jack Sparrow, how's it going? Now this guy, he's always here. Isn't he Jane? Yeah, which guy? This guy here, look at him. Jack Sparrow, Kingfisher. Oh yeah! Oh, 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 oh. yeah. <laughs> he's not camera shy. <laughs> not really, no. He's like, I mean, you don't pick it up on the camera, but actually, wow. he's only two meters away from us. Hey, I'll go a bit closer. Hey, buddy. Yeah, it's because we're weeding, isn't it? Yeah, and he wants to get all the all the grubs there and the sunflowers as well. So how many mascots have we got now, Jane? Me? That's one, <laughs> yeah. Snake. Snake, yeah. Uh, old Red Eye. 
Yeah. Uh, two eagles. Two eagles. This guy, JJ. Uh, yeah, J no, Jack Sparrow there. Jack Sparrow. And then we have the lizard. Lizard? Yeah. Uh, she hangs out over there with it. We carry ants. Ants are, yeah, ants are good, yeah. With a mascot. lot of, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, every guy needs a mascot. And we have... Fred the Scarecrow. We have Fred the Scarecrow. Come on, we'll just show you, just for the sake of it, Fred the Scarecrow. He's not looking <laughs> he's so good. He's look He's looking very bad at the moment. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of a bit... What, what would you call it? Uh, legless. <laughs> yeah, he's legless anyway. Oh, <laughs> hey, buddy! Ah, you doing okay? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> he's a bit like that guy from... Uh, What's that movie? Um, I don't know. What? You know the guy on the island and he's got a football as a friend and we've got... What, what no, that guy, what's his name? You know, like Run run Forest. No, not that, you know that guy. Oh, um, is it the castaway? Oh, never mind. Oh. Never mind. Anyway, there you go. That's our... Life. <laughs> that's our life on the farm. Yeah.